Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and in this video, I'm teaching you how to sew a frame weight. This is something that is going to help you get stability over your sewing machine or your long arm when it's rolling on your frame. So let's get started. The first step is to cut your fabric. This is a full width of fabric, meaning 44, 40 to 44 inches long, and I cut mine five and a half inches wide. And I did leave the selvages on both ends. Of course, if you have different fabric or don't like that idea, just cut them off, no big deal. Now I'm gonna take the fabric and fold it in half, bringing those long edges together. If your fabric has a right or wrong side, you want this to be right sides together. Now you're gonna take this to your sewing machine. You're gonna begin at the fold and you're going to stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance down to the corner, turn the corner, and then stitch all the way up that long edge to the opposite end, back stitch at the end and at the beginning just to secure your stitching. And here's what it's going to look like once you get that stitched. I really like this batik fabric. I think it turned out really nice and it looks really pretty on my frame, but of course this would look great with the print too. It's entirely up to you. Now it's time to trim off this little corner. You just wanna trim a little close to that stitching, but not get too close uh, because you wanna be able to turn that corner without uh, clipping into your stitching. And if you are using something heavier than beans or rice like lead pellets, something like that, then I would advise doing a second line of stitching parallel to the first. But one line of stitching worked pretty good for my first frame weight, so I think it'll work pretty good for this one too. Now it's time to turn it right side out. This might take a minute. And all you're doing is just turning it so that the seams are to the inside and the pretty fabric is to the outside. There we go. That is our frame weight turned right side out. Now it's time to fill it full of rice. I am using this wide mouth automotive funnel. It has about a one inch opening here at the bottom. Anything else, any kind of funnel will work. They just might be a little slower. And this will give you some perspective on how much rice I used the first frame weight uh, that I made. This is a three pound bag and I used up to that much of it. So I've got a little bit left here. I'm gonna pour into this one. I'm guessing that we need about two and a half pounds of rice per frame weight. And of course this would be different with beans. You might need less weight of beans and um, because they take up more space, but they are lighter in weight. It's entirely up to you what you use to fill up your frame weight. Got a lot more rice here. And I'm just gonna fill up the funnel and then let it shake down. So there you can see my frame weight filled and I wanted to fill this nice and tight so it forms a curve. I can't actually fold it in half or anything. That's ensuring that the rice is filling it in, filling it solidly and it's heavy all the way through. I'm not gonna end up with a really light space in the middle or something like that. Um, that's just my own desire for this. Of course, fill it however much you want to with the rice you've got uh, our beans on hand. All right, now for the end, uh, with this all filled up, I've got rice right up to about an inch and a half from that end. And it is a good idea to grab that, pinch it closed, and just give it a shake just to settle the rice one more time, uh, just to see how much space you've got. And then what I'm going to do is just take this end and fold it over a half of an inch, and then fold it over again another half of an inch. So that's taking up that extra space that I had between the rice and the end of the tube. I will have a little bit of space for rice to move into, but because this was so filled nicely through the entire thing, it's not going to reduce that density significantly. All right, now that that's folded over, I'm gonna take this to the machine and give it a stitch. Now this is a weight, which means it's kind of a pain to stitch. But if you do this one step at a time, I think it's gonna be a little bit easier. First step would be just fold over the end a half inch and let's buzz through that with a quarter inch seam allowance. 
So I'm here on my Janome 1600. I have stitched through a scrap charger. That's just to get my machine in stitching mode and ensure that the first stitch I take on this doesn't just gag and create some massive problems. Now I'm feeling the rice kernels <laughs> pop up into that seam. So I wanna slide them back and get them out of that area because obviously I don't really want to hit that with my needle. Plus it won't make a very accurate seam, right? There we go. And I'm just trying roughly to keep that nicely folded accurately across a half of an inch. It looks like I've probably gotten stuck on a rice kernel. There we go. Keep going. And then I'm going to back stitch at the end. clip off my scrap charger, turn it around, and then clip off that frame weight. So I've got, I've got it secured and the rice is definitely locked in there, but now I wanna make it look just a little bit better. So shake the rice down, give it a little jiggle, and then fold that over one more time or two more times. It's entirely up to you how many times you fold that end over. And I even thought, you know, something kind of cool would be to put a grommet on this on the end uh, if you have that ability, that way you have something you can hang it by or you could stitch on a little loop of leather or fabric and that would be something you could hang it by. Uh, this is definitely going to be something that when you need it, it'll be on your frame, but when you don't need it, it might be in your way. So thinking through how you want to store it is part of the process. All right, so now I'm going to stitch back along that line of stitching. Again, trying to make sure that the rice doesn't get into that seam again. I can just, I can feel like little kernels have slid forward and I didn't have this trouble the first time. So I think they're just being a little pesky this time. There we go, back stitch and then stitch on down. If you do end up with some kernels in there, don't worry about it. If your line of stitching is a little wobbly, don't worry about it. Trust me, your frame weight is gonna work wonders on your frame no matter what the stitching looks like. So there we go. Not perfect, but definitely the best I can do today. So that's it for this video. Like I said, a few different ideas for storage would be to add a grommet to the end or a loop of fabric or whatever you wanna do. So that way you could maybe hang it on a wall when you are not using it. Now, you might be wondering if I made longer versions of this for my longer frame. I do have a 10 foot frame with a Cunique 21 on it. And the answer is no. I really like this 44 inch long version. It's perfect. I don't feel a need to make a longer one because the longer it is, the heavier it will be. And this is already two and a half pounds. So yeah, that would add up really, really quick. And uh, honestly, just budding two of these up together is just about perfect if you have a longer frame. For this little hoop frame, you can see it just slots here to the back right up against that back rail and I have a little bit of machine drift going on and just a little bit of pressure that that added it stopped the machine drift completely that is going to increase our control our ability to stitch on a marked line travel stitch that's stitching right on top of a previous line of stitching echo quilting hitting marked lines whatever this is going to give us that added bit of control and stability over my sh our machine we have the opposite problem when we're frame quilting versus uh, quilting with a machine in a table that's stationary quilting uh, and the opposite problem meaning we need to have a little bit more control the machine has so much movement so much freedom it's really hard to do those you know kind of extra beautiful techniques like travel stitching we need to have that control and the weight does that for us so i hope that you will take the time to make yourself a frame weight let me know in the comments below if you're going to fill yours with beans or rice or lead shot or something else crazy that would be really cool i would love to hear from you and what you decide to make for your frame if you'd like to follow along with this series and get a free motion quilting starter panel to stitch along with us, come and check out the free motion quilting starter kit. It's available at leahday.com slash FMQ start. Until next time, let's go quilt.